Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on using a reference number to help us with finding terminal points on the unit circle. So a reference number is meant to use our first quadrant to help us with the unit circle. Okay, so in our last video, let me sketch these points out first. So in our last video, we introduced the quoted unit circle. So this whole thing. So again, I would say Google that, print it out, maybe make flashcards um, to get this well known, but we can also use some other techniques to help us along the way. So reference numbers is one of them. So what I'm doing is I'm just copying the first quadrant of the unit circle. In the green, I'm going to write the t value. So t equals zero, t equals pi sixth, t equals pi quarters, t equals pi thirds, and then t equals pi over two. That's going around the unit circle clockwise, counterclockwise. And then these in the black ink are the terminal points. So these are the points on the unit circle based on those t values. So we add one zero, radical three over two and one half, radical two over two and radical two over two, or square root of two over two, square root of two over two. Here's one half and square root of three over two, and then zero and one. Okay, so those are the terminal points based on those t values. Well, a reference number is just saying any time that you have, so that we have these different bulleted case. So for this first one, whenever we have a 6 right here in the denominator, it's just saying well, that n could change. Its reference value is instantly pi over 6. Okay, so I kind of drew over it. Let me try that one more time. Okay, so all it's saying is if you have a 6 in the denominator, it's saying reference this t value and this terminal points immediately. And then afterwards, we just have to figure out the signs. And then it's a similar case anytime we see a 4, it's saying use the reference pi over 4. Anytime you see a 3 in the denominator, use the reference pi over 3. So the reference number, they use a t with a little line over the t. Um, in case they do want that, the main thing will be to find the terminal point. Okay, so on these problems, it says find the reference number and the terminal point. So the reference number, let's keep that one. Actually, I'll do that one in blue ink. The reference number for number one, instantly all you have to do is look at the denominator. The reference number is pi thirds. Okay, so that's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to box it. Actually, let's, let's not even box it. So that's something that they did ask for, but it's not the main thing that we will want. So I'm going to cloud it. Okay, so that's, that's nice to know, but it's not the, the real, that's why I kept it in blue also. The main thing is going to be the terminal point. That's what we will box. Okay, so the reference number is pi thirds. So it's saying use this point up here. I'm going to start maybe erase it in a second, saying use that to help us with this problem. Okay, however, we still need to figure out what quadrant we're in. Okay, so it's saying t equals 5 pi thirds. One of the ways that I help myself instead of, again, you can memorize this whole unit circle. Here's the whole thing. And you can say, oh, there's 5 pi thirds right down there in quadrant 4. You could do that. That would be it. And then you could, you could, get your answer. However, it can be a little tricky to know that whole thing every, and, and maybe we don't want to memorize the whole thing. What I like to do with these problems is say, well, five pi thirds, five pi thirds is close to six pi thirds. Okay, so I know it's a little smaller than six pi thirds. So all I did was add one to the numerator. And the reason I did that is because six and three divide that's 2 pi. So I know 2 pi would have been all the way around. So here's t equals 0 and t equals 2 pi. So all the way around is 2 pi. 5 pi thirds is just a little short of it. So I know then it should go almost all the way around. And because it has a 3 in the denominator, it should be close to the y-axis. Okay, so I'm trying to draw my points accurately close to the y-axis. So anything with a 3 in the denominator is always close to the y-axis. 
just like it is in my quadrant one little reference that I have to the top right here, and just like it is on all of these in the unit circle. So two pi thirds, four pi thirds, all five pi thirds, they're always closest to the y-axis. So that's never going to change. So if it has a three in the denominator, it's always closest to the y-axis. And if it's closest to the y-axis, it's always involving this point that I starred, except you just need to make sure the signs are correct based on the quadrant. So it would be one half, but negative radical three over two. Okay, so that is the terminal point. That's that's what's most important. So the reference number they might ask for every now and then. However, the main thing they're they're going to ask for a lot is the terminal point. Okay, so number two. Number two, we've got. I'm going to draw my unit circle again. Nice and big. All right, so in the blue, the reference number, and all I have to do is look at the denominator. Instantly, the reference number is pi over six. Let's cloud it again. That's that's they asked for it, so I'm clouding it because it's important for the problem. But the main thing will be the terminal point. Okay, and so the terminal point, so that's the one that I have the two arrows next to right now in my quadrant one reference in the top right here. So I know and, and immediately we do know that these points are involved. So I'm just gonna write this over. So this is involved in some way. I just need to choose I just need to figure out the signs based on whatever quadrant this puts me in. Okay, so 17 pi over 6. All right, well, kind of like the last one, I, I want to figure out where it is. So these these t values can be tricky sometimes. Okay, so let's mark that. Let's even do it in green. Okay, so the t equals 17 pi over 6. I'm just going to mark that right here. Let me erase that little thing there. Okay, so 17 pi over 6. Um, I want to figure out how far around that goes. Well, again, I, I'm going to break this into little pieces and say this is about, actually I did this, let's write it, I did equals, but I'm going to change it. There we go. Kind of like what I did on the last one. It's, it's about 18 pi 6. So I like to kind of make a reference or change my value to see something that I can divide, because 18 pi over 6 is 3 pi. Okay, and 3 pi is helpful for us because as I go around the unit circle, okay, so this is t equals 0 at the start. We know that this, this arch here, that's going around pi so far. Or let's even put it over there. I'm going to scribble that up. So that's going around pi. And then we know one full length around is 2 pi. So, so far, that's going around 2 pi. So going around one more pi would have put us all the way to 3 pi over here. Okay, so pi and 3 pi are at the same terminal point. Well, again, 17 pi over 6 is a little smaller than 18 pi over 6. So that means it should be a little short of where I just stopped. It should put us about there. Okay, so that length around, let's get one other color. Let's mark it in red this time to show it. So we went all the way around once. And then we went a little further to get to there. So that in the red, so it gets messy if we show it every time like this. So that in the red is the 17 pi over 6 around the unit circle. Again, 6 is in the denominator. So it should be close to the x-axis. We figured out it's in quadrant 2. So if we're in quadrant 2, my x-coordinate should be negative. So I'm just going to mark it in the red right there. And let's box it. So the y-coordinate should stay positive. The x-coordinate should be negative. So that is the terminal point. OK, so it's just figuring out what quadrant we're in most of the time with a lot of these kind of weirder numbers. All right, so, oh, that says number one. It should really say number three, but here we go. Um, it says t equals 19 pi over four. Okay, so let me scroll a little bit and we'll sketch it out. Okay, so 19 pi over four. All right, so we've got instantly the reference number t bar is pi over four. Because all I have to do is look at the denominator for that. 
And just using that alone, again, based on my reference quadrant one, I know it's got to be rat square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 over 2 is involved because of the 4 in the denominator. Well, again, one more time. So these values, these are not straight up on the unit circle. So like number one, the this first number one that we actually did, um, that's that's just straight up on there. Okay, so notice the T values going around. 5 pi thirds was just right there. Many times they are. Okay, so here we've got more challenging problems. Okay, so 19 pi over 4 is not on the quoted unit circle right away. Okay, so that means we need to break it down. Well, again, I'm going to kind of break it down in a similar way that I just did. One more time here. I'm going to say, well, 19 pi over 4, I'm going to add 1 to that denominator or numerator and say that that's very close to 20 pi over 4. That is about 5 pi. Or it is exactly 5 pi. 20 divided by 4 is 5 pi. Okay, so 19 pi over 4. So 5 pi, so we can break it down the same way as before. Let's not show it all in the green. Let's just say there's where t equals 0. Going halfway around would put us at t equals pi over here. And then we know 2 pi is right here. Keep it going another pi. Here's 3 pi. Here's 4 pi, and then 5 pi. OK, notice on our t values, the one that I'm currently bolding, our initial starting point is even values of pi, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, so forth. And then the one that I'm now currently bolding to the left are odd pi's, so 1 pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. OK, so that can be a technique that we can now continue to use to help us speed these problems up again a little faster as we go okay anyway so we've got our 19 pi over 4 that's just a little short of 5 pi so if it's a little short of it that means it would be going around so there's the round one so again it gets real messy if we show it every time here's the around twice and then it goes to about there Okay, so we usually don't need to show the swirly. That's kind of messy. I'm actually going to erase it. There we go. And just kind of mark here that in the red, that is the t equals 19 pi over 4. So we don't need to show it going around. As long as we mark where it finally ends, that's mostly what's important. Okay, so 19 pi over 4 puts us in quadrant 2, which means our x coordinate again should be negative. There we go. So I'm just marking that that I already wrote to the side, and now I'm boxing it. OK, so that is the terminal point for this problem. OK, and then our last one here for this, we've got t equals negative 14 pi thirds. OK, so negative 14 pi thirds. Here's our unit circle again. Instantly, if they do want the R reference number, it's instantly just pi thirds. Again, it's just take whatever's in the denominator and write pi over it, pi over 3. All right, but the main challenge, and, and then from there, we also know because it's pi over 3 as a reference number, we know it's the one that's still currently starred. It involves 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so we just need to figure out the signs based on where the quadrant is going to put it, or where that terminal point puts us as a quadrant. All right, so anyway, so let me go back to green and rewrite this. Okay, so negative just means you're going clockwise. Again, I'm just going to say, well, this is kind of close to, so 14 pi over thirds. Let's, let's even ignore the negative for now. Let's say 14 pi over 3, um, that is a little less than, one more time, I'm just going to add 1 to it to say it's a little less than 15 pi thirds. 15 pi over 3 is the same as 5 pi, because 15 divided by 3 is 5. Okay, so that means I would be right there. So there's going around 5 pi. Okay, using my previous problem, I knew that's where that would put me. Okay, so what we need to figure out is where negative 14 pi thirds would put us. So negative means we would have gone clockwise. 
Okay, so I'm just kind of showing the little arrow. So it would have gone clockwise. 14 pi over thirds as a positive would have been a little less. Let, yeah, let's, let's, I'm going to underline this right now. So 14 pi thirds as a positive would have been just short of positive 5 pi. That's going counterclockwise. So this right here is the positive 14 pi thirds. Well, then clockwise should put us down here. Okay, so this should be the negative 14 pi thirds. Okay, because if counterclockwise is up above, clockwise would have reflected it down below. Okay, so we're in quadrant three for this problem. So that means this is negative and negative. So those are both negative values. And so that would be our final answer for our terminal point for this problem. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so these, the, and, and we get a lot quicker and faster at these. So this took a little while to do these four problems, but the more you do, the, the faster you get at these and they become pretty nice. Okay, so, and most of the time we don't have to break it down every single time like these. They're more often these ones exactly. So if we know this unit circle well, again, we can do these problems pretty fast. Okay, but this is, I would recommend always drawing it out, drawing the little unit circle out and finding that big old terminal point um, with our, our colors to get the accurate, correct answer. Okay, anyway, so I hope you liked it. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. And thank you for watching.